Well, hello everyone, Dan Herb with Dan Herb Prospecting here. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, welcome. I hope to earn your subscription today. I'm back here at the Ocean Picture Stone. I have a whole bunch of new tools and hopefully they will work better for extracting some of this beautiful Ocean Picture Stone. And I hope today to show off the new tools and maybe explain a little bit more about this stone, about this quarry, about this type of deposit and answer a few of your questions. That's the goal for today. Come along for the adventure. Let's see what we can find. Hope you enjoy. I have a few people joining me today on this adventure. Dana's here, of course, uh, Bryson and Sarah, and we have a celebrity joining us, but he's not here yet. When he gets here, I'll introduce you. Now in the comments of my previous videos here at the Ocean Picture Stone Quarry, I have had lots of people say, why aren't you using X? You should be using Y. Dan, don't you know this will work better for you? You're wasting rock. You're doing this, you're doing that. You're... I have lots of reasons why I do things the way I do. For instance, I'd love to be using a hydraulic spreader. I didn't have one, I do now. A gas powered wet saw is definitely something I could be utilizing up here, but I have to check with the ministry first whether I can do that without permits or if I need permits. Feather and wedges for splitting off rocks. I didn't have them. I do now, I'll be using them today. So I do have reasons for why I do things the way I do. This claim is very new to me and uh, it's all a work in progress. As I spend more time here, I'll find better methods of extracting this rock. And I'm currently working on putting permits in so I can use some big machinery. But today, hydraulic spreader, feather and wedges, uh, leaf blower for cleaning things off. Got a whole lot of new tools. Let's see if they help out. And my gorgeous wife is here helping me out today as well. And she just came to me and said that she found the piece of the day already. And we haven't even been here for half an hour yet. You know what was nice? What? I didn't have to dig this. <laughs> Chisel it. I just found it. On Fine. the surface. On the surface. Surface finds are always the best. Now one of the first tools I'm playing with today is a hydraulic spreader. This thing is basically just a bottle jack, a hydraulic bottle jack, but instead of lifting things, it forces a wedge through two jaws, which spread them apart with a lot of force. I think I got a 10 ton hydraulic spreader, and now the farther out on the teeth, the less pressure, farther in more pressure. So I'm probably only at like four tons or something of lifting power here, but I wanna see if I can put a whole lot of pressure on this rock, whole lot of lifting pressure, and then attack it with uh, the chisels and see if I can break it free. I don't know if the, uh, the spreader will break it on its own. I see cracks forming. Oh. So the cheap hydraulic spreader couldn't even withstand its own pressure. As I pressurized it, uh, I doubt I had it up to full pressure yet. One of the main pin, the pivot pin, sheared and busticated. So, it was worth a shot. It seemed to be doing its job, almost, and then it broke. It's all a learning curve. Okay, well, since I broke the hydraulic wedge this morning, my next tool to try will be feather and wedges. These go in a drilled hole, and you hammer them down, and they wedge the stone apart. This is actually old school rock quarry digging stuff. Digging stuff? Sure, digging stuff, why not? This is old school, this is how they did it back, like Egyptian times even, maybe, a long time ago. We're gonna try it to extract that rock. Now the feather and wedges consist of three parts. The two feathers, those are the two sides, and the wedge that jams them and forces them apart. Some of them also have a little retainer clip on them. Idea is it goes in the hole. The feathers serve 90 degrees to the direction you want to split. I've also given a little bit of a cut with a little diamond saw just to get help the crack propagate in the right direction. So they go in just like that and then you hammer down on the wedge. I'm gonna put three of them in. One, two, three and see if we can pop off this rock. Okay now we have three feather and wedges in here ready to go. All of them serve 90 degrees put in just the right way. That's a beautiful rock we're trying to split off. Let's hope we get that whole chunk off as one rock. Yeah, it cracked. Yeah. There we go. 
the crack formed. There it is right there. I see another one going back that way. Right through. I'm getting this off. See if we can get it out. Here we go. Oh yeah. That is the way to slab this stuff off. Host on the bottom, beautiful blues with inclusions, white on top for the sky. Let's get some water on this to see. You can see some of the host that's deep down, deep enough down that it hasn't oxidized is still gray. This stuff here was a crack, so it's oxidized and it's red. And that is the most beautiful blue. Look who's come to join us. Polly falling into the scene. So look who joined me today. My good buddy Polly here. Uh, this is completely out of my realm. I'm usually, as you guys know, probably know that I'm into prospecting only. I saw the last video that he did with this ocean picture stone and I said, you know, I have to have a taste of that. So here we are and uh, I'm going to take all of his ocean picture stone. Thief. No, I'm glad to have Polly here. It's so fun doing anything with Polly. Fun doing stuff with the youth of today. Not you, an old guy like me. You sound like a hundred years old. Yeah. Anyhow, I just extracted the most amazing rock. Have a look. That's what the drill holes are from the feather and wedges. Three drill holes, split it off perfectly. That is an awesome piece. Like 12 cents, right? Yeah, it's at least 12 cents worth. So you could uh, cut it through this and have a flat polished piece. Absolutely. If we took this to the big saw, we could cut right through there. We would have the beach on the bottom with the host. We'd have the water, the ocean, and then the white would be the sky, the clouds. And this one even has like a mountain poking up through the clouds in the distance. That is wild. That is awesome. And in the three months I've owned this claim, I've recovered more value of this than I've done in gold in my entire gold panning career. Yeah, apparently what? You sold $40,000 worth of gold. I'm probably up stuff. closer to 50 now. Holy cow, well how yep. much is this one worth? That would sell for like a buck. A dollar? Maybe. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so Paul, you're not gonna be using the drill and feather and wedges and those kind of things. Most likely what you'll wanna do is grab one of the chisels, uh -huh. grab one of the big hammers, find a chunk that you like, and the trick is to get underneath it to start with. Go down below the good stuff, find a nice spot below the good, and start wedging in there. And you have to hit hard to break this stuff free. Oh my goodness. And here we go. We got a nice one coming. Uh. Oh. Oh. <laughs> That's just so cool. Yeah, and this, oh this piece is gonna be even better. Could you here. actually find the gold in there? Could you imagine? <laughs> the assays say there's gold here, but the amount is so small and it's locked up in the iron. So it's not something you would ever find. I see. Look at some of that stuff. Isn't that beautiful? It's loose, just have to get it out of the, the rock now. <laughs> that there would sell on my website for $75. That's a one pound piece of what I would consider premium material. There's a bunch of different things that would make a rock premium. This one here has the deep, deep blue, the really nice blue, yeah. and a nice, a nice bottom host layer, so you can make a good beach scene out of that. I see. And like wow. even, even this little guy, spray that one down. That would be a piece of premium, small, if, on, if someone wanted small pieces to make up a pound, yeah. that would be one of the pieces in a premium bag. Holy cow. So really the picture of the beach is on the side here, right? Yeah, usually uh, side looking in. If you were actually to cut this stuff from the top down, you would just get, you know, right. a straight blue color. So if you wanted to, you could cut this out and that you can just have like a bunch of islands. Absolutely. Cool. I hope to get that rock out as one piece someday. Look, there's a pirate. <laughs> this is my... <laughs> <laughs> it's my aunt, the pirate. Beat, Hi. beat away on rock. Ooh, what is it I can get <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. oh, this guy is gonna be amazing, and it's big. 
If you All want right. to try to pry those out, I'm not sure what's behind the, like they're oxidized on the surface, but yeah. they might be kind of neat. What, uh, what made this? Like how well, did this come to be, this type of rock? Th that, that's a, a whole geology course in itself. But basically what it is, is the, the bedrock has fractures in it naturally, all over the place. And if, if water deep down in the Earth's crust gets hot enough, it starts to boil and force its way up into those cracks. And as it's boiling way down under pressure, it dissolves quartz, gold, all sorts of things. And it forces the weight into the cracks, making the cracks bigger as it forces in. And then when it gets to a certain height in the crust, the pressure and temperature is just right that that quartz can't stay in solution anymore. Mm. And it falls out and it deposits. And why this deposit is so beautiful is that quartz had a little bit of some sort of metal in it that colored it blue. Most of these hydrothermic veins are just white quartz. Very seldom do you get these blue things or any other color. Yeah. It's important when you're drilling like this that if this dust starts kicking up into the air that you wear a mask because this stuff is very bad on your lungs. Mm -hmm. Luckily it's moist enough today that it's not blowing up. Make a knife out of that. Perfect little split right through the two feather and wedges. That's the piece I want right there. Beautiful chunk. Host, blue, whites, inclusions, everything. Let's pop that off. And there we go. There's the piece I want. That oh. specimen probably worth six or seven hundred dollars. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, this is Bianca. Her nickname is Sita, and this is ah! <laughs> this Hola. is Keith. This is Keith, our cameraman's wife. Sí. So she just found a little corner of this blue, like you see that. We started cleaning it, and then she's starting to sc discover that <laughs> this whole thing is covered in it. It is like green everywhere. Maybe I just put it in the truck before here. Here, let see? me just push it. <laughs> That is a nice one. Ah, oh, it's a beautiful one. That is amazing. Wow. Nice. Wow. If this isn't valuable, it doesn't matter to me. I, I still like it. So wherever Polly goes, he has an entourage that follows him. Keith and Bianca are two of his camera people. This is Bianca. Woo! And she found the most amazing piece. Oh my gosh. And we're gonna take and we're gonna take that piece back and slab it, cut it, cut off this face and cut a slab out of it for Bianca to take home with her. Oh, it's exciting to see how we look like. Like thank you so much, Dan. You're this welcome. This place is amazing. You are amazing. <laughs> Love it. Oh yeah, we have a rattlesnake that Polly's playing with, a black widow that I'm playing with. Good day, good day for venomous critters. Okay, this rock is ready to come. I've been just hammering underneath it. We used the feather and wedges on the top. It split it away from the wall nicely. And now a few more hammers on this, uh, this chisel here, and it should just pop it right out. Let's hope. Here we go. <laughs> it's a nugget. 
I like the dark blues in that one. Wow. And there's still more. And look at that. Like, I knew there was good stuff here, but really, that goes all the way down to there, doesn't oh, yeah. it? Once you there, get... There's a band of, you know, but. Yeah, once you get rid of that whole side here, there's going to be more. Oh, yeah. You know? It's huge. Now, some of these rocks here have the ocean picture stone, but they also have this agate on the surface. It's sort of a, it's kind of a bactoilial, but it's it's more of like a druzy in the bubbles. Uh, I've cut some of this stuff that looks really, really neat inside because of it's, it's protected inside, so the host rock is very green. Uh, really neat stuff. Maybe I'll try to take a sample of that with me today. Polly and I are just exploring around places I haven't been before, and look at the seam Polly just found. Wow. It's a big, big boulder. It would be a lot of work to extract that. Yeah, Goes that's, down too? Yeah. That's a nice one. And all through there. That is an amazing rock. It's a nice piece of candy. I like digging in. Even with a bit of agate on it. See, uh, this is that uh, buctoidal druzy agate that I was talking about. Say that again? Uh, yeah, good. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I, I always say it wrong. Buctoidal. It's not buctoidal. <laughs> So just laying back by the ocean, relaxing. A lot of people have asked me, um, they say, Dan, ocean picture rock is obviously a cutesy name for that rock. What's the actual mineral? This is not laminar. This is actually known as the proper name for this rock is BC Ocean Picture Stone. But if you want to know the mineral makeup of the BC Ocean Picture Stone, the mineral makeup is chalcedony, silicated serpentine, Never heard of that stuff before, but it's silicated serpentine. There's a little bit of agate on some of them, and there's limonite, if you will, a rusted out ironstone. Um, and it's actually not limonite, it's actually the host rock that's just rusted out, but basically the same thing. So put those four minerals together in a figured pattern like this, and you've got what's known as BC Ocean Picture Stone. So we're on our way up for day two at the Ocean Picture Stone here, but a forest fire started overnight in the local area and the hills are covered in forest fire smoke. It'll still be a good day, but we get to breathe some smoke. Is the mask for the smoke? Well, this is hilarious. I took another break from drilling, looked up the hill and said, what is that? Whoa, look at the blue on this thing. That is an amazing rock. That's probably three to four pounds. That will be sold as is a premium specimen. Specimen? Specimen. Wow. So the rock I'm working at is definitely cracking. I've got a crack going all the way through, all the way around. It's cracked free, but it's still physically attached somehow, probably underneath, just probably all just the mechanical attaching. I'm gonna have to see if I can pry that free somehow and get it loose. But the feather and wedges. have done a great job. It's free, let's hope it's as pretty as I think it's gonna be. Woohoo! Okay, Keith, come on over, check this out. This could be amazing, it could be an absolute dud. I have no idea what to expect inside here, but it's loose for sure. Oh. Oi, oi. Okay, here we go. It's a biggie. Whoa. Let's see that. Oh yeah. Oh, there's a nice one. I'll get that. Beach, that ocean cool. rocks, water, sky above. There it is. Woo, my leg! Wow. Yeah. That is beauty. Really? That's gonna be... Birds flying in the sky. Yeah. Nudists laying on the beach. Yeah, it's perfect. You? Me, yes, me, nude on the beach. That's a nice chunk, man. Wow. Look at that, grab that fracture there on the bottom. Right here. Oh, a little fracture. See that? Even that's just an amazing little thing, isn't it? Yeah, look at that, that's kind of neat. 
Score! Score! And this seam keeps going all the way over there. I assume it keeps going that way too under the dirt. So we got lots of this material. And to answer another question my viewers, a lot of my viewers have, they keep saying, Dan, you're crazy to show where, where your claim is. Dan, people are gonna steal from you. A lot of them are even saying, I'm coming to steal your stones. Right. You're crazy. Well, the security here is crazy. A, you have to go through a rancher's uh, property and that rancher likes to speak with shotguns rather than words. Uh, it's got locked gates, multiple locked gates on the way in. I've got security cameras all around. And it's in the middle of nowhere. It is hard to get to. If someone wanted to steal from here, they would have a lot of work to go through. And we would catch them. So I am not all that worried about people coming up here to steal my stones. Yes, they are very valuable. And even Paul, who had the directions, had permission to be here, had the keys for the gate. He took hours to get here because he got lost so many times. Dad, you, have you can cut this one. Oh yeah, that was just laying in the in the muck there. Yep, that that's a specimen right there. Interesting. It's a big one. Oh yeah, this is good. Ah! Oh! oh! That's a nice piece. Broke up into a few, but nice piece. Yeah, look at those colors though. Wow. You have like a couple of rivers and stuff in there. Look at this, that side. That's a nice wall right there. Yeah, can you get the get it wet there, Polly? Yeah. Is that? Yeah. <laughs> Look at those colors. Wow, that's a nice little. Uh, those are all great. And you can sell each one of those, eh? Yep. That would go into a chip bag. That's about a half pound chip bag right there. Holy cow. You got more of those? Cool greens. That's a nice truck right there. Isn't yeah, it? if I can get this out as one, that'd be awesome. It's cracked. It's cracked yeah. through here, it's cracked through there, and then the cracks sort of disappear into the softer stuff. But, yeah. What about the blasting? Uh, the blasting they did back in the 80s wrecked a lot of the stone. Uh, where it's nice and solid, you know that was a long distance away from the blasting, but where it's all fractured up, that's where it was close, and a lot of the fractured stuff is unusable for lapidary. We got one major crack going through there, so this piece will come off as one, and then this will come off as another. Yeah. Polly, you're gonna want to see this one. <laughs> come on. <laughs> I like the dark blues in that one. Wow. Oh, you missed the bucket. Dang it. What a beautiful spot to hang out with such great people and have fun prospecting. I'm loving it. All the specimens that I'm collecting on this video, I'm gonna hold off putting them up on my website for sale until this video is released. This video will come out in about a month's time. And when the video is out, I will put all those specimens up for sale on my website. So if you want one of them, you can get it sort of right away live there. And of course, if you want any of this ocean picture stone, if you're into lapidary, if you're into making jewelry, like to tumble rocks, it takes a really nice polish. It tumbles really well. It's really easy and great to work. I do sell it on my website, www.danherdprospecting.com. I sure hope you enjoy watching these videos. Thank you to all of my subscribers out there. Big, big extra thanks for my patrons. Your support really helps me a lot in making these videos. If you'd like to help me creating weekly videos on prospecting, mining, treasure hunting, all that kind of stuff, you can go off to www.patreon.com slash danherd to learn more. Thanks everyone. Hope you're having a great day out there. And until the next one. Bye. 
Bye. See you later. Bye. Bye.